Marissa and the Mountains, words by George M. Johnson, art by Chelsea O'Brien. Marissa lives in the mountains. They surround her along with tall pine trees on steep slopes. Marissa says that it's like being stranded in a crowd of adults or if you had shrunk standing in the middle of her mom's pencils and markers jar. She looks up, 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 and she can only see the pencil's pointy tips with the bigger markers looming behind. Oh, Marissa, you're just being dramatic, her mom says. Marissa says the mountains are spooky. They cast long shadows. They swallow the sun in the evening before playtime is done. In the morning, the sun, pale and tired, struggles to rise, rise, rise. No, Marissa does not like those mountains. Marissa's brother Harry likes to hike with his friends in what he calls the hills. But Mom worries about bears and cougars, and so Marissa does not go. Not that she wants to anyway. She would rather ride her bicycle by herself soaring down, down, down. But then she always has to push it back up. No, Marissa does not like the mountains. In winter, she likes to toboggan sliding down, down, down. But sometimes there is so much snow that she gets stuck and stands frozen like a snowman or she has to play inside. Snow stays on some peaks right through summer. Just to remind her that winter is coming again. The water in the lake stays cold for a long time into summer too. And Marissa has to wait, wait, wait before she can go swimming. No, Marissa does not like those mountains. But this summer, she is going to visit her cousin Rosie, also seven, who lives in Saskatchewan, where Marissa was born. And it is flat. How old was I the last time we went, Marissa asks. You were four. But you had so much fun, especially with Rosie, says Mom. Finally, the day arrives and they drive, drive, Drive. The mountains get smaller, 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 and then they disappear. Yes, Marissa is glad to leave those mountains. On the prairie, it is flat, flat, flat. Marissa cannot believe how big the sky really is and how much it changes from one moment filled with puffy, hairdo or wispy ponytail clouds and the next nearly black until zapped by lightning and then suddenly a wide brush stroke of gray appears and the rain sheets down over a town. When her family arrives, Marissa and her cousin Rosie hug even though they hardly know each other and everybody says they look like twins. Rosie even has a spare bike for Marissa, and Marissa hops right on. She knows exactly where she wants to go because she can see the barns and grain elevators and even railway tracks from the distance. I want to ride to the next farm past all those wheat fields, Marissa says. They shimmer in the sun and ripple in the breeze. That's a long way, says Rosie farther than it looks. I don't mind. At least I don't have to push up hills. Come on. No, Marissa does not miss those mountains. But even though she doesn't have to push, she finds she cannot coast either. That night she stays up with Rosie watching the sun sink in a blaze of reds and oranges. Like her hair, says Mom. Then purples, browns, and grays. 
Just as she is nodding off, the sky dances like pixies under more stars than she has ever seen. Marissa imagines drawing those northern lights with glow-in-the-dark crayons. Late the next morning, she and Rosie play hide-and-seek, but there are not many good places to hide. Afterwards, they lie on their backs in the grass looking at clouds. Look, says Rosie, that one rolls across the sky like a threshing machine. Those big machines in the field? Yeah. Hey, check out those swoopy mountains, says Marissa. That one looks like a bear. Really? I've never seen a real bear before or a mountain. You haven't? I see them all the time. Well, mountains. I've seen a couple of bears from the car. Wow, says Rosie. Still, Marissa does not miss those mountains. One day they go to a lake. Marissa and Rosie dive down holding hands and the water is so warm. But bugs, big ones, chase them on the shore. Marissa goes, ouch, 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 and scratch, scratch, scratch. You'll get used to them, says Rosie. And besides, the water's only warm enough to swim in when they are here. Too soon, Marissa and her family have to return home. Marissa hugs Rosie one more time, and they promise to write. As they drive, Marissa's mind wanders, and she watches the sky with teardrop clouds. She wonders what the mountains will be like. Finally, she falls asleep. When she wakes, the mountains surround her, and she smells pine. She smiles at the sun, lighting proud peaks, and wants to draw, draw, draw them using all the colors in her own pencil crayon jar. She will send her picture to Rosie. A thrill runs down her back just thinking of it. Then Rosie will know what the mountains look like when she visits at summer's end. Yes, Marissa does love her mountains.